Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, denied vacation until October. Husband takes entire October off, boss faces consequences. The second story, boss ruined over 10k of merchandise trying to look good to superiors. Lost his only manager in night checker. The first story is, no vacation slash PTO until October. Okay, I'm taking all of October off. Something happened at my husband's work last night that reminded me of this decade-old story. For context, the time my husband worked overnights at one of the largest supermarket operators in North America. I was about six months pregnant and the store he worked in had a change in who the store manager was. And when I went shopping, I used either a wheelchair or a scooter with a cart on it, due to a disability that makes it difficult for me to walk under normal circumstances. Background. Originally, we had felt pretty lucky that between all the pregnancy tests I had done to confirm that yes, I am in fact pregnant, and the ultrasound, the earliest and the latest due date we had been given all fell in the first week of September. So my husband had planned to use one of his weeks of vacation that week, and then use his paternity leave after that week so he would be able to be there while I was at the hospital in recovery, and for the first days of our baby's life. His boss seemed genuinely confused by the request. He was 22, single, and called his truck his baby, but it said something along the lines of, Hey man, it's your vacation. You should use it how you want to. Then about a week later I came home from one of my doctor appointments to a message on the answering machine saying, Unfortunately I have to deny your request for vacation and paternity leave in September, as someone with more seniority is put in for those days off as well. I hope this doesn't cause problems between you and your wife. I burst into tears on the spot, but my husband said he'd go talk to the person who requested those days off. Explained that he asked for that time off because it's when the baby is due, and see if he could offer them something to give him those days off instead. Unfortunately, it was one of his co-workers who was going to have a major surgery, and needed that time off to recover, so we couldn't ask him to trade vacation weeks for us. My husband put in for time off for the second week off in September and is denied. Then he tries the third week and is denied again, but this time his boss tells him that he won't be able to use any of his vacation time until October, due to his position and who has time off. Cue the malicious compliance. We realized that because this boss was new, he probably didn't realize that my husband had been saving all his vacation days, PTO and paternity leave, when we added up all the time and amounted to three weeks of time off. And if we worked it around to start around when his days off were, he would be able to be home with the baby from October 1st until November 9th. His co-workers on the night crew and several of his friends on the morning crew felt that he had been seriously shafted by the new boss, so they got in on this plan with us. We waited until the boss's day off, and that's when my husband put in the schedule for the time off he was requesting, which was approved by the scheduling manager and the night crew manager. This was in July, so the only thing left to do was wait. Our baby was born in the early hours of the morning, about two days before our earliest due date after 29 hours of stage two and three labor. I ended up having an induction due to the fact that I had been in early stage labor since the beginning of August, and it just wasn't progressing. When my husband called the night shift manager to say that I was going to the hospital to give birth, he told my husband to call in if he was going to miss any more days of work, and they would make sure it got covered. It wasn't PTO, but it was considered an excused absence. After I came home from the hospital, my mom started staying overnight with us temporarily to help out preparing meals, taking care of the dog and the household chores, so I could focus on taking care of myself and the baby. That first month home was pretty rough, so I was relieved when October rolled around, and I finally had his help 24-7, and my mom was able to take a break. The Aftermath First up was the three days of paternity leave. On the morning of the fifth day of this 40 day long vacation, the boss woke me up at 6 a.m. wanting to talk to my husband. I told him when he was feeding the baby and asked why he was calling. He said he was checking in to see why my husband had no call no showed the night before. And I said sarcastically, oh no, that's terrible. I'll go get him for you. I put the phone on speaker so my husband can talk to his boss while he's feeding the baby. So I get to hear everything. The boss very smugly informed my husband that his paternity leave was over and since he didn't come in the night before, he would be written up for a no-call no-show. My husband said, yes, I know my paternity leave is over, but my first vacation week started last night. The boss, first vacation week? Husband, yeah, I have three. I was gonna use one in September, one in October, and one in November. But since you told me I couldn't use any PTO until October, I decided to just take all October off to be with my wife and newborn. The boss, I'll call you back after I look into this. I don't know how I managed to stay silent and not laugh at this conversation but somehow I did. We got a call back later that day that went something like this. Boss, yeah, I'm gonna need you to come into work tonight. I never would have approved your request for time off if I knew you were taking the whole month off. Husband, you didn't approve it. The night manager and scheduling manager both approved this, so I'm not coming in tonight. Boss clearly thinking this is a gotcha moment. 
I didn't approve it, and I need you to come in tonight. So you'll be here at 10 on your regular schedule for the rest of the month, or you'll be written up. Husband. No, I won't. I submitted the request in July, and you never denied my request. It's been approved by the other managers, and it's already started. So it's too late for you to deny it now. Boss. I'll call you back. After that, my husband called the union steward to confirm that he was in the clear, and they say that he is. We got another call the following Sunday, which was my husband's next day off, asking if he would be coming in that night since he wasn't listed as being on vacation in the system. Husband. Am I on the schedule? Boss. No. Husband. Then it's my night off, so no. He hung after that, but we got a call like that every night my husband wasn't on the schedule, due to it being one of his regular days off, and him not being marked as being on vacation in the system. Some of the ladies in the bakery and deli section of the store put together a card shower for us and gave them gift cards, since we never said anything to them about when my baby shower was or where we were registered. Oops. Later that week, I made a trip into the store one afternoon to pick up some stuff and introduce them to the baby, and my mom came along too. While we were over there, the store manager came up and said, you must be husband's wife. I was feeling petty, so I pointed out that we would have met sooner if he didn't have a habit of running away and hiding in his office when customers approached him. I don't know if that irritated him or if he was planning on saying this next anyway, but the next words out of his mouth were, you don't look like you need help with the baby. Husband said he was taking time off to help you with the baby because you have a disability, but I guess you don't need it, huh? The bakery deli ladies glared at him, and my mom went pale because she knows I usually react very strongly to those comments. But my mom also raised me to be civil and mannerly, so I just smiled and said, I hope you don't speak to your employees like that. That can get you fired. Bless your heart. And one of his employees told him I was right, so he sulked off. He seemed so desperate to find any reason he could to force my husband to come back to work before the end of the month. I started wondering if he was being petty and might try to retaliate after my husband came back to work, or if he was just desperate. So I called one of my husband's co-workers. Remember when I said new boss was 22? Well, he also had a habit of bragging about how he started working for the company as a cashier when he was 17 and worked his way up to management in just five years. At some point after the baby was born, District came and did a walkthrough and it turned out his dad was the district manager. And he didn't work his way up to management, he was a Nepo baby. That burned bridges with more than just a few employees. Then he turned up in a brand new truck and said with the year-end bonus he was going to get, he could pay it off in one go. Several employees walked, including two on the night crew. Since my husband was on paternity leave, he had to work overnights to make up the slack. He'd never showed up to cover overnights when they were shorthanded before that. So we figured he was desperate to get my husband to come back because working overnights was cutting into his dating time. Finally, the end of my husband's vacation time came and his boss called again. Boss, you used up your paternity leave in your vacation weeks. You're coming in tonight, right? Husband, no, I still have PTO days left this year. And since I won't be able to use them all between November and the end of December, and they don't roll over into next year, I decided to take them now. Boss, well, when are you coming back to work? Husband, November 10th. Boss called back the next day to tell my husband that actually he had used up his paternity leave while he was at the hospital giving birth. So he would have to use PTO to cover that. And actually he had used a week of PTO when he took me to the hospital with fake labor. So actually he would be coming back to work on November 1st. My husband called the union steward and filed a complaint that his boss was retroactively deciding what counted as paternity leave and what counted as PTO and trying to force him to use PTO days to cover days where he either went in late or left for a couple hours and then came back and stayed late to make up the missed hours. He went in to fill out some paperwork and we didn't hear from his boss again between then and when he got replaced at the end of the following January. Edit. To clarify some questions in the comments regarding FMLA, we didn't use it. This was us cashing in all my husband's vacation he had for the year, as well as PTO days we think in total it was 29 days, plus three days paternity leave. We stretched to 40 by only applying for time off on the days he was actually scheduled to work. At the time, the company only offered three days paid paternity leave. I don't recall how much they offered unpaid, or the total amount though. So we decided to just use the paid days since my parents were close by. As for why we put up with the calls coming in for so long, simply put, we were both exhausted. And as much as we wanted him to stop calling, period, we didn't want to offend him since neither of us knew how long he'd be there. We had expected him to be gone in three months like most of the other rotating cast of store management had been. So when he stayed longer than that, we decided it was just easier to just deal with him long enough to enforce a boundary. The next story is... 10K in Groceries, Malicious Compliance. So this is a story from about a year ago, when I was a front-end manager in a grocery store. Typically, I worked night shifts as the manager, and it was me and one other employees. We would be the only people in the store, so if a cake order came in, it was on me. If meat needed to be sliced, it was on me. If hardware malfunctioned, relevant, it was on me. You should know that the building this grocery store was in was built in the 40s. It was part of a chain of grocery stores and was the first one on the East Coast. Being as old as it was, structural, safety, and mechanical issues arose rather frequently. 
For example, when it would snow, our roof would sink in the middle and leak, resulting in a work order called into corporate by me. When it would rain hard, various parts of the ceiling would leak. Another work order. The freezers in the aisles were about 30 years old, so if they went down, work order. Well, the store manager got annoyed with me calling in so many work orders, claiming they made us look bad to corporate. He commanded me not to place any more no matter what. I said I would agree, but only if he would give me in writing that my job duties were being changed. He complied. Two nights later, one of our customers comes to my counter, telling me the stuff in our front freezers are defrosting, getting soft and whatnot. I check it, they were right. So full panic mode, about 15 freezer units down. Remembering I'm no longer allowed to call a work order, I leave my checker in the front and begin transferring everything to the back freezers, one shopping cart at a time. Four hours later, it's all in the back. Then the back room freezers go down. I call my boss, begging him to let me call it in. Over 10K in merchandise is gonna be lost. He tells me not to call in. He will do it tomorrow through a separate line that won't make us look bad. Won't count as a work order. Tells me that since everything was cold when it went in there, that room will keep it cold. Even without the freezer units working. He was wrong. Three hours later, we have water leaking out of the back and into the store from all the defrosting goods. So I just laugh. Me and my checker just start grabbing every wet floor sign, every mop we can find and arranging them. We then go to the 7-Eleven and some other nearby stores where we knew the managers telling them what happened and asking if we could borrow theirs. They comply, so I go up to my boss's office, which overlooks the store, and over the phone relay to my checker how to arrange the signs and mops to spell out work orders save stores. We had to use some water cases and whatnot to finish the message, but got it done. Both of us left our quitting notice on his desk, clocked out, went home. Store closed two months later. And the last story is... I just have to see an ID. You don't have to convince me you're telling the truth. I used to install cable and internet for the local cable company. The company has the same name as a college football team in Ohio, with red as their school color. This is my last job of the day, and it's only a modem swap. I swap out their outdated modem for a new one, copy and paste their Wi-Fi name and password onto the new one, and that's it. The house is massive and in a really nice neighborhood. Get to the door, ring the bell, and the customer's son is there. Dude looks young, so I ask to see an ID to make sure he's 18 or older. Company policy 90% of the time is, don't ask if the customer looks old enough. The son gets argumentative right away and starts telling me how he's in college. He's actually 21 and even has his CCW. And I tell him the policy that he just looks young and I'm only covering my butt. This isn't good enough. He says hold on and calls his mom, who's the actual account holder and on her way home. I see where he gets his attitude from when he puts his mom on speakerphone and she tells me how she knows the owner of the company. She's only five minutes away and then I'll be sorry if I leave before she gets there. She tells me she made that appointment and made sure someone would be there and that I should just do my job if I like having one. I just say, okay, I'll just get started. I head into the basement and notice that their existing modem also does phone. Their work order on the other hand says to replace it with an internet only modem. So most people that still have a landline for phone only do so for their home security system. And when I remove the phone modem and put in a non-phone modem, you no longer have a security system. By the time mom gets home, I'm all finished and the son is already connected to the Wi-Fi. I apologize, have her sign the work order and quickly drive off. Maybe 10 minutes later, dispatch calls me and tells me how the customer has a security system and that they were supposed to get a phone modem and would I go back. Apparently, the customer's security system was blaring and wouldn't shut off. I explain the situation and how the work order didn't say anything about a phone modem. She understands and says she'll have another tech head over there when someone is free. I gave the tech a heads up and he didn't get over there until late evening. Never heard anything else about it. I never did anything wrong. Hit the like button to support the channel. I appreciate it for every like you put under the video.